cacci fuori i proni da me guidato e lo vittò e il filoso di me Hi, I'm Gloria Gari. So welcome to the Julia Gari Foundation's Remote Concert Series. Now, each program will feature interviews and updates on the world of opera. You will meet former winners of our international competition, famous singers, critics and opera lovers. So let me turn you over to our host now. Thank you so much. Hello. I'm Donald Levine from the Giulio Gari Foundation, and I'd like to welcome you to the second of our Giulio Gari Salon series. Today we're going to be talking with Jessica Cambio, soprano. Jessica was our 2010 first prize winner. We will be talking to Jessica, who's now in Berlin, Germany. Welcome, Jessica. Good afternoon. Actually, I say, should say good evening. You're in Germany. Yes. We're afternoon here in New York, and it's early evening in Germany. Yes. And uh, welcome Jessica Rose Cambio to the second of our Julio Gari Salon series. And uh, you were our first prize winner in 2010. Did I get that year right? You have yes. a very interesting background. Italian-American girl from Providence, Rhode Island, comes to the big town to learn how to sing. And uh, you've worked with some very interesting people over the years. And you've also had, like many people in the business, you've had your ups and downs. Well, and, so uh, I, I won the Julio Gary competition in 2010, and that, yes. actually, that was the same year, surprisingly, I also won the Licia Albanese Puccini competition yes. and the Girl to Listener. So it was all like the same year. Like, yes. Okay. Wow. A trip, a trifecta. <laughs> Jessica, what does winning a competition like this do for a young singer? Um, so, when a young singer wins a competition, it, it triggers off a lot of things. So, first of all, obviously, it's a confidence boost, which is great. And it's a monetary boost, which is even better, because singers spend every last dime that they have learning how to sing, coaching, yes. voice teachers, learning languages, acting, dancing, anything that you can imagine that is not funded at all, like we said, by the American government at all. So, and on top of that, people have student loans and families and, you know, it's, it's not easy. Living in New York is very expensive. So um, I think that it's very important for many reasons. There's, there's a, a point in a singer's career where they should do competitions. And then there's a point in the career where they should retire from competition. Right. But when I was young and, you know, did my trifecta, <laughs> I, um, I, I did it and it was, it was great. I actually ended up doing like over 100 competitions or something. And it was wow. ins insanity. Um, but it's, it's something that also is wonderful because you end up making connections with a foundation that lasts you throughout. So that has been the case, obviously, with us, because with the Giulio Gari, I mean, I know that Gloria has always been around and has always been following me. You've always been there. And um, Steve DiMeo, God rest his soul, was one of the people who really was a very big um, uh, influence in my career and helped me a lot of times when I, when I needed him, when I got in trouble, when I couldn't yes. do with lessons. And so because I was a winner of the competitions, then it was easier for me to have to maintain the relationship with those foundations who then also helped me throughout the years. And it's sort of like we help each other too, because 
obviously I would send students to the competition or I would send friends to the competition and then the competition helps me and I help the competition and, and it's sort of, you know, it's like a working. Yeah, well, that's, that's the whole purpose. The whole purpose is that we find new talent right. and uh, we give them a uh, platform. Right. And from there they go, all, they go out and, and uh, they make their mark in the world, which you've done. Yeah, the triple crown. You won them all. So yeah, 2010 was a good year. Yeah. It seems like so. It seems like two days ago, and now it's, yeah, well, it being 10 years ago. I mean, that's crazy. It's in between, you've had a lot. I mean, you went off to Europe. You studied. You lived in Modena for a number of years. You studied with uh, Mirella Freni, and uh, you worked with Renata Scotto too, who was an, almost an exact contemporary of Freni and. I'm going to ask you a little. Contrast them as teachers. You worked with both of them. So uh, the thing is, <clears throat> the interesting thing is, as you said, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, and my very first voice teacher was Maria Spacagna. I don't know. Yes, wonderful lyric soprano. Yes, and she was actually the first American uh, singer, the first American butterfly in La Scala. So she was the first American person. Really? Yeah. I know, I know she recorded the original... nine. The original uh, premiere, La Scala premiere version of a uh, butterfly, not the not the Brescia edition, which was the revision. I think they did both at the same time, actually. We recorded all of the versions. Right. CD that that you can it's amazing actually because you can put in you can program with different tracks and get the four different versions. Yeah, that was fascinating the way she did that and she was a wonderful butterfly. And she was my teacher for about 11 years before wow. I started going off to, to other places. So she, my foundation basically came from Maria Spokane. Came from her. After 10, I would say 10 or 11 years. So she was like my main teacher. She was your mama, your vocal mama. in Los Angeles. Yes. In 2004, 2006. And I went to Aspen because Elizabeth Hines was my teacher and she also teaches in Aspen. So I went mm -hmm. to Aspen in 2005, I think. And I met a coach there whose name is Tibby Plyler, Sylvia Plyler. She um, coaches and has coached for a really long time in Cincinnati at the Conservatory in Cincinnati. Yes. And she was the first person who said to me, um, you know, you have this like Italian thing about you. Why don't you look into studying with Renata Scotto? Because I heard that she has an academy. And I was like, who's Renata Scotto? You know what I mean? Like, I know who yeah. she was, but, <laughs> but I was like this dumb kid who had no idea yeah. like, what opera was, you know? So I think I was 21 or 22. And so I said, oh, okay. And I really, you know, I really admired um, TV and I appreciated her, her, uh, investment in me and so I looked up Renata Scotto and I was like oh, immediately in love with her you know I mean yeah. I kind of had heard her singing before but I never was really invested because I was obsessed with Lainton Price <laughs> yeah and um so I started listening to Renata like endlessly because I wanted to get to know her yes you know, what she was and and I realized that she I realized over the years not just you know before I met her that she was very much about interpretation and very much about making each word mean something.
I met Renata in 2005 on Puccini's birthday. She granted me an audition and it was just me auditioning because she had already chosen the people yeah. that, um, that were going to be a part of the Academy. But because I reached out and because Maria Spacania knew her, she knew Renata, she said, I have this girl who I would like to send to you. She's wonderful. I think you'll like her. Would you like to hear her? So Renata was mm -hmm. on board. So Maria and I got in the car. We drove to New York and it was December 22nd, 2005. I remember that because it was Puccini's birthday. I yes. know exactly what I was wearing. And I was a nervous wreck. I mean, so nervous. So I walk in and I ask them for a practice room. They gave me a practice room to warm up. And while I was warming up, I heard a knock on the door. And Renata walked in and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I thought I was going to pass out, you know? Yeah. So, so I spoke to her in Italian. She didn't expect that because she was expecting, you know, this, this girl from yeah. Canada. She was just expecting an American. So I said to her, you know, it's very, it's so lovely to meet you. I'm, I'm really um, honored and I'm, I'm nervous to sing for you, but I really would like to be a part of your program. So yeah. You know will consider me she's like oh wow you speak italian really well so we went in this room where we ended up having the lessons mm -hmm. and i sang um Chi bel sogno di Doretta and something else i don't remember but um i was so nervous i was shaking so she came up during my audition and she held my hand while i was singing yeah. <laughs> And it was just me. Maria wasn't in the room and it was just me and Renata. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, so she said, wow, I think it's wonderful, but you're so young, you know, you must sing more leggero, more leggero. that was good times i learned a lot of repertoire with her most yes of the repertoire. and she knew yes she studied like a crazy person so she knew that if she gave me something to learn that i would go home and learn it the next day okay so that's uh, renata scotto now what about mirella freni because i know you worked for years with freni after i finished at manis i decided to go back to italy again uh, so I moved to Italy when Morella Freni accepted me. With Scotto, I think, and she actually says this too, she says, I'm not a technician, I'm not a voice teacher. What she yeah. teaches is um, interpretation and how to read the score. And because in the score, everything is there, especially in Puccini. I mean, Puccini, yes. every bar changes what he wants. And it's very, very, very clearly written out. It's a map. Yes. So she basically taught me how to read the map because I didn't know how to read the map. And so when I would see Diminuendo, when I would see Mesa di Voce, when I would see Portamento, I think young singers, especially I'm teaching now. So a lot of yes. students do the same thing. They glaze over those things, but, but they're really super important because that's what he wanted. That's what the composer wanted. So you have to do them. And with Renata, I really, really learned how to appreciate what the composer wrote and do what's written not put portamenti all over the place because i can or because i can't sing legato without the yes without portamenti all over the place i i don't particularly like that and i like clean singing to train my brain and to train the academic in me to really look at the score in a very different way and then of course she was very adamant about every word means something even the word e eh or yes you know and with Mirella, instead, it was kind of the, the, the polar opposite. Yes. We both complemented each other really well in that way, because with Renata, I learned much more um, melodrama and interpretation. And with Freni, it was about beautiful singing. Every note had to be beautiful, had to be spun, had to be 
um, Avant Tissou, she was always with Avant Tissou. So she really, she didn't really fix my technique or teach me technique, but she was so adamant about making every single note sound equal to each other. Equal. So equal amounts of legato, equal amounts of breath support and resonance and round singing and with the mask, but also, you know, with a relaxed space. And she was not right. super articulate in that kind of thing. Luckily, I knew already what she meant. So I, yeah. And you can't tune out because she walks around the room. And if you have your phone out, she's yelling at you. So like we weren't allowed to have our phones out. We weren't yeah. reading a book. We had to be paying attention 100% of the time. And she made sure of it. So when you're sitting there listening to basically her saying the same thing over and over and over again, you start to learn what sounds right and what sounds wrong. And so even when she wasn't specific, we knew immediately, no, that sound isn't right. Yes. So it just gets so ingrained in your ear that I feel like more than my own singing, it's helped my teaching a lot, a lot. I mean, and we, we would have, if, I, if you really asked her, like I asked her one day, what do you do with your breath? And what do you feel here? And what about your, your palate and all these things? If you ask her those questions, she's more than willing to answer them. But yeah. some of the information she didn't necessarily give. She gave very specific instructions, and so those were the instructions we had to follow. So let, and, let me ask you, you know, something. You, you, you studied with Franny, you worked with her until 2015. You stayed in, in Milan for another year, and then you came back to New York, and a lot of things happened, and you did a lot of things. And uh, then you finally, in the last year, ended up in Germany. I know you're living in Berlin now. You, you sang your Menon Lesco, your first one in Frankfurt on Halloween. I, I know, your Halloween, and then they close the theaters the next day. But at least you got to do the performance. So I, I decided finally to, I left Modena after four years because I couldn't take being in a small city anymore. I wanted to right. In a big city, I, I get I feel very suffocated in a small city after a couple yeah. of years. And I feel very comfortable in New York. I felt very comfortable um, in, in big cities in general. So I thought, well, I want to stay in, in Europe. I have an Italian passport. I'd like to stay in Italy. So why don't I try Milan for a year? So I did. And I had an agent. My agency was there and my coach was in Modena. So I would just go get on the train and study. With it's not that far. Yeah. And then I met some coaches in La Scala, which was fantastic because I also branched out. I did a lot of auditions when I was there. And, you know, for the first time, I actually, I really, I met someone there who um, was very sweet to me and was basically just a couple of years older than me, who wasn't ever married, who had never had children. And I thought, mm, this could work, you know, but I hated Milan and his life was in Milan. So I said, yes. Oh. Not. And I went back to New York because I had work set up in America. So I had um, Pagliacci with City Opera and I did Pagliacci with New Orleans Opera. I was in Sarasota singing Mimi. Yes. And then I also did Knoxville Opera singing Mimi. So I had a couple of contracts in America and I thought, all right, well, it's time for me to go back to America and give New York another chance. <laughs> Foundation and I appreciate everything that Steve DeMeo and Gloria have done for me over the years and, and you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So much. Truly, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for this. This was, this was fun. <laughs> and let's stay in touch. Okay, we will do. Okay, Anna, you take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>
again for being here today with our salon series with Jessica Cambio, who was one of our winners in 2010 and has made a beautiful career ever since. And I'm so, so proud of her. And we are presenting many, many more young singers and winners of our, of our competition so you can enjoy everything so beautifully, even if they cannot perform on stage. And we want to continue this. It is so important for all of us, especially for the young singers, to continue with their ambition of their life. It's a lifetime career and also for the audience. There's nothing like it. So thank you, join us again, and please, I. Thank you so much for all your donations to help us to continue. Thank you. Oh,